Okay. So I, I think I might have mentioned this in um, one of my other videos, but when I picked up this particular uh, G3, uh, it was a uh, one of these were you know no CPU, no memory, no drive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I guess because I was so used to uh, dealing with the G2 that I just instinctively bought a i5 6500T for it and, you know, just used it and everything was fine. And I was wondering, well, gee, that, that is weird. You go from G3, G2 to G3 and you have the same CPU. But again, I just it just seemed normal. But then as I learned more and more that about the G3, I found out, oh, well, of course, it will also use a seventh gen. And as I was... Um, researching then I'm, I'm I just I don't know happen to look at this guy and I see the sticker and this actually says you know um a core i5 7th gen and even on the back if we uh, where is it oh here it is if we look here we see that when it was originally sold it was a um, i5-7500T. So, hoping to sort of return it back to its former glory, I was able to order... Eh, it's probably going to not look great, but anyway, this, this is a, an, an i5-7500T, and I'm going to actually use, reuse the CPU in here in a um, G3 65 watt unit, um, just again to have all you know all these weird combinations of stuff. But it will be a 65 watt unit that uses a T processor instead of the you know non T processor. But um, we'll probably show that in a uh, separate video because um, I wanted to to focus the the um, this one on doing the upgrade for to the um, seventh gen. This will be my first first seventh gen uh, elite desk um, when it comes in there. So, without further ado, uh, before we uh, open this guy up, uh, I'm going to run some benchmarks with Cinebench. Uh, we'll show those so that we have something to start with, and then once we um, Put the um, the ice the i five seventh gen in here. We'll go back and rerun just so we can get some uh, comparisons. So what we'll do is we'll run some benchmarks first on the um, the i five sixty five hundred T just to kind of see where we're at. So that way we can see what kind of difference it is when we go with the uh, seventh gen. Okay, so we got our number for the multi core. We'll try the um, single core. And here we've got the um, numbers for the si single core CPU. So we'll uh, run the same ones after we uh, put in the seventh gen CPU. Okay, we're gonna obviously have to take off this heat sink, um, you know, take, obviously take out the drives, uh, move the fan to the side, etc. I'll probably clean off the um, heat sink on here because uh, I'm going to be putting fresh thermal paste on uh, the new CPU. And then um, actually maybe before we even um, uh, put the heat sink back on, I'll just make sure that it boots and that it shows up uh, with the right, you know, CPU and everything's working. So, okay, let's start with taking this drive out let's move it down a little bit Well, you do this so often, um, 
you just get kind of used to it. I know some folks just have uh, gone the route of getting rid of the uh, caddy, but I don't know. Maybe it's just um, me. I've just gotten so used to opening it up that um, it's just part of the fun of uh, sort of unwrapping the gift, you know, um, taking the stuff out. Uh, I'm not very uh, uh, knowledgeable about, you know, fixing cars or other kinds of things. Um, but usually when it comes to electronics and, and of course, computers, um, I'm able to, um, to get in there. So might as well enjoy it and, and do what you can. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave the SSD in here. Um, we actually, the Windows is, is on this guy that I took out. So that's what we're actually going to be booting from to, to run. Okay. Well, this is a 16 gig unit. Um, uh, let's see. Let's, let's, move it. let's move these guys. There we go. And I believe if we look on here, yes, these are um, the, um, what would that be, uh, the 2400 um, speed um, RAM using the 6th uh, gen um, CPU. The fastest you can get is 2133. Um, I'm hoping that with um, the 7th gen, it should show up as 24. So hopefully that will also um, uh, help out in the benchmarks. All right, we'll loosen here. Okay, is that loose enough? Yep, oh, this one still needs a little more. Okay. It's stuck on there. Okay. Okay, we've got our i5 7500T. Let's take this one out. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's do this. Before we take that out, let's orient CPU so that way we've got the uh, triangle to the triangle. When we pick it up, we'll grab this. Okay. We'll take this one. Oop, okay, make sure it slides in there nicely. Okay. And let me get it hooked up and we'll see if we if it boots up. All right, I'm gonna attach power. And I'm going to try to um, boot, um, I'm going to hold down the escape on the keyboard so that that way I can boot in. And I just, I'm just more curious about just to see what it registers and make sure everything looks okay. So I just used um, this little pointer tool and hit the power, hold down the escape. Let's see. Well, that's a good sign. We got the fan going. Nothing so far. Oh, all right. We do have boot. Very good. 
Um, I'm going to pause this and switch to my other. Okay, looks like we we do have boot. Let's go into um, system information, see what we have listed. Okay, yes, we got an i5-7500T, right amount of memory, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and um, shut this down and um, put the heat sink and hard drive back in. Okay, we had a successful boot, so um, I'm going to, oops, sorry about that, I'm going to detach everything and, uh, or at least the power, and we'll put the heat sink and um, put some thermal paste on and get this guy uh, booting up into Windows so we can run some, some tests. First thing I want to do is clean this off, and uh, what I find, I like to use these little pads. I believe they're used for makeup removal. And I've used this with some isopropyl alcohol to take off the, the old thermal paste before I put on the new stuff. Just wiping it. You notice the thermal paste, of course, gets everywhere. Wipe that down. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll put on our fresh thermal paste onto the CPU. And of course, every bro everybody and their brother and sister <laughs> has a different opinion on these, but I've tried different ones and so far I've been going with kind of the healthy um, amount right in the middle and then let the um, sort of the mushing down of the heat sink take care of spreading it. I know that there's the X method, there's the um, lots of different ones. Um, you know, I just noticed this heat sink's got a little bit of, of goop here so i'm going to hit it with a little bit of air be right back okay that looks better let's see get this oriented make sure that's all the way in okay Try to do a little bit. I know that there's the one, two, three numbered, um, and you can do it that way as far as how you uh, tighten it down. Just like to put a little bit of everything on it. Then we can put the fan back. That's what we're trying to do here. Let me see if I can. Yeah, just sort of thread this through here. Uh, let's see. Each one's a little different. You know, each of the uh, the units as, you know, the G4, um, uh, G5, G2, on how this stuff kind of threads. This one I'm not as impressed with doesn't seem to work as well but i think it's enough just to kind of get it out of the way okay all right we'll go let's go ahead and put the um the caddy back in Thank you. 
I don't know if it if it's really painfully obvious, but one of the things to me that is um, the biggest time saver is if you have uh, uh, tools or screwdriver stuff that that's magnetic that allows for you to pick up the screws a lot easier. Because all I do on the side here is um, just tap it, pick up the screw, and then I'm ready to go. All right. Never tighten both this first one down too much because then the next one, the, the other screw doesn't have a chance to really grab. So, okay, now we can do it. Okay. Learn from my, uh, <laughs> you'd think I'd learn um, as I do it enough. Okay, stick this. So you'll notice. Um, the best way, of course, is if you can get those nice, cool screws that you could stick, you know, on here. And there's four of them. Sometimes they have a little blue on them and they it slides in nice. But um, I, I keep thinking, well, I want to buy a bunch of them or something just to have. But I take these out so often. So all I do is I just add one little screw on here, just enough to hold it so that I can um, slide it in. So to each his own. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick the cover back on and I'll get power and connector and hopefully we'll be able, we'll be booted into Windows so we can run our, our tests. And also I'm curious to check to see if it shows the um, memory speed. Okay, we got everything connected. Let's start her up. And let's see. Okay. All right, we'll switch to the other. Looks like um, we're probably going to have to tell it the um, boot drive. Yeah, this seems to happen every time I switch the um, CPU. So we're going to reboot and um, go into the. We're going to reboot and go in and tell it the uh, drive to uh, uh, boot from. Holding down the escape. Yeah, it always seems to go into here first. So we'll say yes. Okay, now we can go in. All right, we'll go to boot menu. We'll pick this one. And this should get us into Windows. Okay, we got into Windows, we'll log in. I should note that, um, it again, it always seems like I have to tell it, but then once it's been in Windows or it's done its updates, whatever, then the next time I reboot, um, everything is fine and it goes right in. So let me get uh, connected in. All right, we're in Windows. Let's check a couple things. Let's see. Let's go into Task Manager see what we've got there. First, we'll, we'll go into the performance one here. All right, does show that we've got an i5-7500T. about the memory? What does it say for them? Ah, memory, 2400, very good. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's a positive and it's showing the right amount. Uh, 2.7 gigahertz, okay. Um, one thing I always like to double check too before I'm going to run stuff is make sure there aren't any um, devices that it's missing. Okay, that looks good. Um, let's go into support assistant too, just in case. I can't imagine there would be new uh, or different um, 
drivers. We'll check for updates. We'll check for updates. I, of course, have this hooked up to the, the network. Uh, nope, oh, everything's up to date. Okay, let's run some benchmarks then. Okay, we'll start with uh, the multi-core. And I think it even looks like it, it remembered from our, our prior one here. So this was the 157s. So we'll go ahead with the multi-core. So not bad as far as uh, <clears throat> difference in, what is it, uh, 157 and then a jump to 181, which is not bad considering when you look at the difference between the uh, 8500 and 9500, pretty much neck and neck. So let's try the um, single core and see what kind of numbers we get. So the... Um, <clears throat> That CPU uh, single core, obviously uh, better numbers than uh, on the uh, 7500T versus the 6500T. Um, when I was testing in another video, um, putting in a uh, um, 8500T versus 9500T, really wasn't a huge difference between the two, but definitely you can see a difference between the 75 and the, and the 65. Hundred, so for what I paid, I think um, I definitely uh, would have spent just a couple dollars more and gotten the uh, seventy-five hundred to begin with. Uh, so in this case, it's I think it's a kind of a no-brainer if you've got a G three, uh, go ahead and get the um, seventh gen. I uh, might as well get the faster um, memory speeds and faster CPU overall.